It's time for another edition of Lewis at Large. 60 minutes of smart talk radio featuring guests from all walks of life in conversation with your host, Warner Lewis. So sit back and lend us your ears for the next hour. Now here with today's first guest is the host of Lewis at Large, Warner Lewis. Well, welcome everybody to another segment of Lewis at Large. Here's truly Warner Lewis from the Flight Deck. And uh, of course, uh, as always, that means some smart talk radio is certainly in your future. In this segment, we're very pleased to have with us William Davis, uh, Dr. William Davis. He's a preventative cardiologist whose unique wheat grain free approach to diet uh, is advocated in the New York Times bestseller, Wheat Belly, Lose the Wheat, Lose the Weight, and Find Your Path Back to Health. Along with his series of associated cookbooks and a blog, he's the medical director of the trackyourplaque.com and is actively engaged in cultivating discussions about heart health, which have yielded solutions to a Penelope of other diseases. He lives in Fox Point, Wisconsin, and uh, that's not a bad place to be. Dr. Davis, how are you, my friend? I'm terrific. How are you? We're good. Uh, let's talk a little bit, uh, again, a brand new work about uh, undoctored, you know, why healthcare has failed you and, and how you can become smarter than your doctor. What, uh, Dr. Davis, give us a little bit of the premise here. Sure. So I started this conversation back in 2011 with the first Wheat Belly book, uh, talking about how agribusiness and geneticists had changed the wheat plant. It's no longer, you're in Kansas, so you, you probably know this well before I did. Wheat is no longer a four and a half, five foot tall plant, traditional plant. It's an 18 inch tall, high yield, what they call semi dwarf plant. And they change the characteristics of the plant dramatically, uh, introducing such effects as appetite stimulation, mind fog, behavioral difficulties in kids. Uh, it increased its potential for autoimmune disease, et cetera. So people went wheat free, and spectacular things happened. It became clearer as the wheat belly. Uh, experience expense to many hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people now, and uh, it's become an international phenomenon. If you extend it to elimination of all, all grains, you got even bigger benefits. Then we went another step. If we corrected some of the deficiencies that were caused by grain, you know, we're told that grains are needed for nutrition, which is complete nonsense. They actually cause several nutritional deficiencies, specifically minerals, positively charged minerals like magnesium, calcium, and iron, and zinc. If we correct some of those deficiencies, well, what I started seeing was people would go to their doctor, and they say, I'm going to do this wheat belly thing. And the doctor says, don't do it. It's going to hurt you. It's against guidelines. You're going to be diabetic. You're going to have heart disease, high cholesterol. You're going to take a statin drug, all these things. But the person would do it anyway. And they come back and report to me and their doctor, I, I lost 63 pounds. I don't have type 2 diabetes anymore. I don't have eczema or psoriasis. It's gone. My joint pain was gone within the first week. My acid reflux was gone within five days. I'm no longer depressed. My leg swelling is gone. My uh, plantar fasciitis is gone. My dandruff is gone. My complexion is better. I look 10 years younger. What I saw this became, what this became, was a way for people to achieve magnificent health despite their doctor, despite the blundering of of my colleagues, to be honest. So that's why I I saw what we really had here was not just a means of losing a few pounds or fitting into a size two dress. It was a means to achieve astounding health and weight loss without the involvement, or I should say without the interference of the doctors or the healthcare system. So we have here an astoundingly impressive, effective means of restoring health. All right, question. And again, I'm not I'm not trying to simplify at all what you're saying, but what you're in essence what you're saying, take weed out of the diet and all of a sudden things will start to turn over time. That's only the first step. So that was the step we learned about first and and the issue I talked about the most at first. And by the way, this is not the gluten-free message. The gluten-free message is a very corrupt message that's meant to replace one evil, wheat, and gluten with another evil, which are gluten-free foods. So your listeners should know that. This is not a gluten-free. It's ironic that people say, oh, that wheat belly guy is just gluten-free, which is not true. What's, yeah, what so, if, if you would, just a quick sidetrack, what, what's the evil in gluten-free, just for those that are listening? So people say, I can't eat gluten, meaning one of the proteins in wheat, rye, and barley. And so they'll turn to foods called or labeled gluten-free, 
What that means is a food manufacturer replaced the wheat and gluten with cornstarch, rice flour, tapioca starch, or potato flour. Those are the four most common ingredients, 99.9% of gluten-free foods. Now, they don't provoke the same kind of autoimmune diseases and mind effects as wheat, but they make you fat and diabetic. So very few foods raise blood sugar the higher than wheat products, by the way. What foods... What short list of foods raise blood sugar even higher than wheat? Cornstarch, rice flour, tapioca, starch, potato flour. It's almost like a cruel joke. Replace one problem, the gluten and wheat products, wheat, ripe barley, and replace it with another problem. It's as if I told you the way to quit smoking is, and all the problems with it is to smoke low-tar cigarettes which would be, of course, ridiculous. You'd, have, you'd still have lots of exposure to lung cancer and heart disease, et cetera. So if we replace gluten and wheat with gluten-free foods, you've only traded one problem for another. That's why people say, I went gluten-free, I gained 27 pounds. I, I now have prediabetes. I have a big uh, collection of love handles around my waist. That's from the gluten-free foods. So, but the whole process of recovering from all this starts with wheat elimination, but then as we talked about, we expanded to to those other things, to grain elimination, limiting your sugar exposure, uh, correcting deficiencies caused by grains, and some other common deficiencies. There's only six items in my whole undoctored menu of strategies, and they're all accessible to everybody. Wheat grain elimination, sugar carbohydrate limitation, omega-3 fatty acids, fish oil, iodine replacement, and uh, uh, addressing thyroid status, magnesium, uh, uh, cultivation of bowel flora. It's the most, the last one is the, 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 the kind of trickiest, but it's very, very powerful once you get it right. But you put this all together, and something absolutely wonderful happens. There's an unusual synergy that I don't fully understand myself. I call it the 2 plus 2 equals 11 effect. You put all these simple and apparently unconnected strategies together, and you get this magnificent synergistic effect. That's why I believe you have such things as people with lupus, no longer with lupus, people with polymyalgia rheumatica, no longer with polymyalgia rheumatica and and joint pains, people with rheumatoid arthritis having complete relief within a few months, people losing 50, 100, 130 pounds in a year's time. So we're not just seeing a little bit of improvement by cutting calories. We're actually seeing a complete transformation in the landscape of health. And again, this is all, again, I'm I'm not trying to oversimplify it, but basically eliminating grains and in particular wheat from the diet. That's the big first step. Your listeners should know, you know, ideally they understand what they're doing. So you could buy my books, but it's all detailed off to my Wheat Belly blog. It's also detailed in the new undoctored book. But recognize that there are opiates, opioid peptides in wheat and related grains. So everyone should know that the first week when you stop eating grains, you're going to have a pretty awful week. It's an opiate withdrawal syndrome, nausea, headache, fatigue, and depression. It's like having the flu for a week. Everybody survives, thank goodness. I don't know of a way to not have it. There are steps you can take to blunt the, uh, the severity of it, and that's all in my blog and in the books. Hydrate, hy- hydrating, adding salt to your diet, don't exercise, pamper yourself, little things you can do to get through that awful first week. But once you're through it, you feel spectacular. And then the changes in health and weight loss unfold with sometimes startling rapidity. So people sometimes, I've, I've heard this from some people, I stopped your lifestyle. You know why? I lost weight so rapidly, it was scaring me. And people kept on asking me, what was happening? Did I have cancer? <laughs> so, so things. once you go through this process, the pace of transformation is, is quite surprising for many people. What uh, Again, you're a cardiologist. What does the medical community uh, and those that you've talked to and shared these ideas, what are they saying to you? There's two groups. Sad to say, most of my colleagues don't give a darn about health. That sounds harsh, but I'll tell you what I think my colleagues care about, the bottom line. So most of the things my colleagues are engaged in, you know, it's prescribing drugs and building revenues for the hospital system, the medical device industry, et cetera. They never actually provided health. So those 
of my colleagues who are in that world don't even know this is going on because they're too busy putting in defibrillators and doing bypass surgery and angioplasty and endoscopies. That's what they're focused on. There's a growing, uh, a rapidly growing segment, though, of my colleagues who are saying, you know what, I thought it was BS at first. So I had eight patients all come to me and say, I'm doing that wheat belly thing. And I stopped all my medications. I'm thinner. I feel better. I look 20 years younger. I hadn't felt like this since I was 25 years old. And the doctor first doesn't know what's going on. Then he sees it three times, eight times, seven times, ten times, whatever. And they start to realize, well, holy crap, all the things that I've been taught were wrong. And that the solution for health is really easy, accessible to everybody, and they don't need, my patients don't even need me to do this. And yet they're turning around literally hundreds of common chronic health conditions. So those, those uh, doctors are coming to me and saying, you know what, I, I know you're kind of, you're, you're, you say this some obnoxious things about, about us, but you're right. And now I'm doing this with my patients. So uh, I'm, I'm grateful that's happening because, you know, any doctor or healthcare professional who does this magnifies and spreads this word to so many more people. And that's happening. And so it's not my charisma. It's not my good looks. It's, it's, it has to do with the fact that this simply works. Again, if you just joined us, here's truly Warner Lewis from the flight deck of Lewis at Large Radio talking to Dr. William Davis. He is a respected cardiologist and also a best-selling author of Wheat Belly, Lose the Weight, Lose the lose the wheat, lose the weight, and find your path back to health, uh, basically has declared enough. Uh, Dr. Davis, what about, uh, do you find that this thing pretty much uh, works for men and women, young, old? Uh, does it transcend all of those kinds of barriers? Works for all those groups, works for Republicans, works for Democrats, works for independents, works for regardless of race, color, age, because so every strategy that I advocate, whether it's grain elimination or vitamin D or iodine or cultivation of bowel flora, what we're really doing is replacing or restoring the things that you were supposed to have been doing all along. So humans had, did not consume grains, believe it or not, for the first 99.6% of our time on Earth. In, in, in historical time, we added wheat just a moment ago. And by the way, even ancient people who ate wheat had a dramatic downturn in health, including tooth decay, bone diseases, and iron deficiency. Vitamin D, you and I are supposed to be running naked or or nearly naked in the tropical sun and eating organ meats like liver and getting our vitamin D that way. Well, you know, if you're in Lawrence, Kansas or Kansas City or St. Louis, you can't run naked in the <laughs> <laughs> in nope. the sun, and you work indoors more than likely. And, and so, and most modern people don't like the idea of eating organ meat, like liver. So, but, but vitamin D, your body expects vitamin D, it needs vitamin D. So everything we do here is compatible with the human experience going back few, millions of years. So nothing here is fine. So that's why this is appropriate for everybody from newborns on up. And everybody from newborns on up benefits from these strategies because they're all it's like saying is it good to breathe air yeah you need to breathe air right so i mean it's one of those intrinsic needs that humans have adapted to everything on this menu of strategies is something that humans our bodies are expecting yet anyway what uh, again amongst uh, your patients and amongst the people that you speak to do people think oh god this is just another one of these darn fad diets or how do how how do you what uh, what kind of resistance are you running to uh, amongst just <laughs> patients and the public i I've, I've heard it all uh, uh, this is just gluten free which of course is not um, why not just cut calories which of course does not work or at least get you only a temporary solution um, isn't this just a fad diet? One, it's not just a diet. It's a whole program for restoration of health and weight loss and turning back the clock a decade or more. So, yeah, there's all kinds of uh, – because you know what? One of the problems you and I are facing is agencies like the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the USDA Food Plate Food Pyramid and other such agencies got their advice so colossally god-awful wrong that it – contributed in a big way to the world, U.S., now the world's epidemics of obesity, type 2 diabetes, and autoimmune diseases, at least in North American, Western Europe. 
In other words, the official advice on diet and the neglect of real health by the healthcare system has created a world of very ill people with multiple chronic conditions, long lists of medications. Had they gotten it right from the start, you and I wouldn't have anything to talk about. I'd have no reason to write books. There wouldn't be all these different kinds of diets and, and iterations on how to get healthy again because official advice got it right. But the official source of information got it so awfully wrong that all of us are scratching our heads and saying, this can't be right. Cut your fat, cut your cholesterol, eat more healthy whole grains? That can't be right because it makes you fat, diabetic, and gives you autoimmune diseases. Take a drug like a cholesterol drug, a statin drug, for high cholesterol just to keep you healthy? That can't be right. And by the way, that's colossally wrong. That's ridiculous. That you need so health care, by the way, you'll find that health care more often than not is a, the means to monetize health. It often ha- does not provide health. So statin drugs do not provide health. They provide almost no benefit at a substantial cost, financial cost as well as health costs like type 2 diabetes. But that's how the healthcare system works. It doesn't give you health. It monetizes health. Now, there are times you and I need that healthcare system, right? If, if we're in a car accident, you need the trauma unit. If you come back from Costa Rica with dengue fever, you're going to need antibiotics. So there are times we do need the health care system. I, was, I practiced medicine for 25 years. But there's so much here not being passed on to nice people. The, the irony is the information that now can empower us as individuals and free us from the health care system and the doctor has really reached a very significant uh, critical mass. You and I and your listeners have the means to be spectacularly healthy without the doctor without drugs, but there has to be some clarity in our thinking about this. This is not talking about four enemas a day. It's not talking about all that airy, very crazy stuff. It's it's a rational scientific approach to removing the causes that cause hundreds of health conditions. What about, uh, and again, I, I know a lot of this is covered probably in your book, but give us an example of what what would you? What would be sort of a typical dinner? If, if, if again, you're eliminating rice, you're eliminating bread, you're eliminating several other things. Give us an example of, of what you would see, Doctor Davis, as sort of a, again, sort of the wheat belly dinner. How about a, a pork chop? Hopefully, from an animal that was raised um, under humane conditions. Eat eat the fat. I hope it's marbled well because you want a lot of fat. We never limit fat. We never limit cholesterol. Both of those are absurd ideas. So we eat, let's say, meat with the fat. Um, uh, how about some steamed broccoli? How about some spiral cut zucchini that's uh, in tomato sauce or pesto, basil pesto? Um, you can have, you can finish your dinner with a slice of pie or cake. But we recreate those foods. So I can have a delicious cheesecake, or I can have a muffin or a cookie or any number of really tasty goodies, too, for dessert, but I'll recreate it using benign, healthy ingredients. For instance, I'll use ground walnuts as the crust in my cheesecake, or I'll use almond flour and coconut flour as the flours in my muffins. So it's every bit as delicious and varied as a grain-based diet, but I don't pay the price uh, with type 2 diabetes, obesity, a 46-inch waist, skin rashes, migraine headaches, acid reflux, and ulcerative colitis. Did you uh, did you have suffer from some of these symptoms earlier in your own career? Or is this just work from patients that you worked with? Personally, I, I've had type two diabetes, a triglyceride level of three hundred and fifty, a low HDL of twenty seven, which is high risk for heart disease, uh, hypertension, acid reflux irritable bowel syndrome symptoms, multiple forms of skin rashes. <laughs> in other words, I had a lot of these things. Now, I, I've seen this play out in many hundreds of thousands, now millions of people. It's not just my experience. But my stumbling around 20-some years ago was one of the first things that told me. By the way, for me, my dietary misadventure began when I became a vegetarian. I cut out all meats, all added oils. I gained 30 pounds. That's when my triglycerides went to 350. My HDL dropped to 27, the good. And uh, I became a type 2 diabetic. I had to undo that. I, I no longer have type 2 diabetes. I have perfect blood sugars. I have a perfect, a perfect hemoglobin A1C with no drugs. 
I just take a handful of supplements like vitamin D and fish oil and iodine, no grains. I take specific efforts to cultivate bowel flora. I, I, don't, I have a normal blood pressure, normal blood sugar, a perfect blood sugar. Triglycerides drop from 350 to 43. My HDL, the uh, uh, good, went from 27 to 94. It almost quadrupled. Uh, now, that's just my experience. There's much more here than my experience. But you can achieve those kinds of spectacular changes with absolutely no drugs. Just curious as to, again, I want to go back to, to your fellow physicians, whether they're family physicians or, uh, so to speak, all the way up to cardiologists like yourselves. Why, why is this not out there more? Because the, the sad fact is that the healthcare system is more interested in a new $40 million wing, do more bypasses, implantable defibrillators, and uh, coronary angioplasty, or doing more endoscopies and colonoscopies, or building its chemotherapy program. So the healthcare system is built on generating revenues. The doctors are educated to do that. The sales reps from the medical device industry, the pharmaceutical industry, are all bent on doing that. Uh, look, look what's happening with direct-to-consumer drug advertising. It's driving costs even higher. Look at the lack of restraint in drug, you know, the drugs for hepatitis C. If you went to the pharmacy today and got a little brown vial with 120 capsules, uh, a three-month course, the charge is eighty-four to $94,000. That's what's going on in healthcare. It's become this ruthless predatory system to take more of your money. You know, it's unsustainable. Uh, in the U.S., 17.5% of GDP goes towards health care, $10,000 per American per year, higher, as much as double over that of any other Western country. Yet we rank last, by the way, compared to 13 other industrial, industrialized countries in health care quality, longevity, infant survival, uh, 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 number of chronic conditions. We actually rank last. You know, people say American healthcare is the best in the world. That's not true. There was, there was, there was a time when it was true, but it's no longer true. In fact, we're, we rank last. Yet we pay the most. If, so there's also this fiction that the more you pay for healthcare, the healthier you will be. Actually, the data is, data are quite clear. The more you spend on healthcare, a lot of this comes from Medicare data. The more you spend on healthcare, the higher the mortality rate. <laughs> so wow. and yet you see hospitals and hospital systems trying to recruit more specialists and more primary care doctors and trying to get more MRI and PET scanners and start a new chemotherapy cancer program. What they're not telling you is the more they spend, the more people die from the complications and untoward effects of their treatments. What we should be doing is tapering back and educating the public, tapering back the medical system and educating the public that health is actually just an arm's length away. It's very simple, but it's virtually free. And when something is free and its competition is hundreds of thousands of dollars, guess which one gets dispensed by the healthcare industry? Free and simple and effective. Is, so I tell people the enemy of the healthcare system is not sickness. The enemy of the healthcare system is healthy people. Because if you're healthy, truly healthy, you're useless to the healthcare system. It doesn't stop them from trying to monetize your health through things like statin drugs and colonoscopies at age 55. But uh, 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 if you're healthy, you're useless to the healthcare system. Well, it is a fascinating topic indeed, and I'm sure one that our listeners have been listening very carefully on. The work is called Undoctored, Why Healthcare Has Failed You and How You Can Become Smarter Than Your Doctor by William Davis, uh, a well-known and respected cardiologist. Uh, Dr. Davis, how can people find out a little bit more about uh, not only uh, some of the writings you've done, but a little bit more on the whole subject? You know, the Undoctored book just came out a few days ago, so the Undoctored.com web properties aren't even up yet. They're going to be up in the next few days, a couple of weeks or so. In the meantime, there's lots of this stuff on the Wheat Belly blog, the Wheat Belly Facebook page, you know, and all social media related to, uh, to Wheat Belly. But you'll see the shifting over to the Undoctored. So if anyone, anyone Googles Wheat Belly or Undoctored, they'll find all this stuff. Okay. Hey, thank you so much for your insights, and, uh, and do appreciate it. Sure thing. My pleasure. You bet. We'll be back with more right after this on Lewis at Large.